Welcome to another episode of Advancing With. Today, we're speaking with Lauren Lochnade, Scaled Solutions Lead at Google. She used to be in the advertising industry in Pittsburgh and over in New York. And now she's in tech. Lauren, say what's up. So my name is Lauren Lochnane. I am a Scaled Solutions Lead at Google. I work on the YouTube Brand Connect business, which is Google's in-house influencer marketing platform for YouTube. I have been there for about three years. And before I came to Google, I was actually working in the advertising industry. And I was a member of Ad2 for a number of years when I was in Pittsburgh working at Mark USA, which I believe is now nine rooftops. What kind of led to your transition and adjustment to like going on the tech side and the position that you're in now? When I worked in Pittsburgh, I went to an event called Startup Weekend and while I was working at the agency, I co-founded a startup. And that really was my introduction to all things tech, I guess. It was kind of a crash course. And we ended up winning the competition that weekend and continuing to work on our project until I decided to move to New York. I was really looking to work on some really big global clients. And I found an opportunity in New York. So I ended up giving up the startup, but I knew that that interest was still there and I started to realize I was at a point in my career where I needed to make some decisions about how I was growing and, and really what I saw my trajectory being. So I started thinking about companies that I would be really excited to work for and ultimately what I wanted my next role to look like. And I knew going into tech, I wanted to take more of a behind the scenes role. So that's really what brought me into the tech world is just realizing I needed to, you know, start making moves in that direction to really build my career in the way that I wanted. In your, you know, what was like for you transitioning in the, you had a really good vision, right? Of like what you kind of want to transition to, but what was that transition like? It was very scary. Uh, the adjustment period was tough because I didn't know how my skills were going to translate. And I knew that the most obvious way that they would translate would be in sales. And I didn't want to go into sales. So I started reaching out to folks that worked in, in tech companies or that I knew had made a transition at some point. And it was super helpful to chat with different folks, but I also at the same time was trying to network and understand what are the available opportunities? How, how do I get my foot in the door? I think I had applied to Google who knows how many times over the years. And I had never, never had any bites, so to speak. So I knew I had to be much more targeted in my approach. I contacted whoever I knew at Google and just started understanding what does the process look like? What should I be thinking about? How do I talk about my skills in a way that is transferable. And one of the biggest shifts that I had to make was, was just being more willing to take a risk. So when I started at Google, I actually took a contract role and I had never been a contractor before. I had always had these, you know, full-time roles and I knew I would be leaving a very good situation, so to speak. And, you know, it was, it was scary from that perspective of you're taking a risk. You don't know how it's going to work out. And I, I told myself at the very worst case, I'll have worked at Google for a year in this contract position, and then I'll go on to do something else. But what ended up happening is that I, four months in, was able to interview for a full-time role on that team. And so the transition happened a lot sooner than I expected, which was wonderful, right? I, I got a little bit lucky in that sense, but I, I really believe, you know, one of the only reasons that I was able to then come on full time was because I just, in those four months, I was like, whatever I can do, you know, whatever I can work on, wherever I can contribute, I'm going to. And that really helped me, I think, to actually get hired in the full-time role. If you were to bottle that up and think about you know, you made your transition from one city to another and, you know, a transition from like working in one kind of industry to a different one. You know, what is your advice to those who are trying to look at advancing their careers and making those next steps and kind of like maybe even having some of the same thoughts or desires that you have? 
not being afraid to take risks is is kind of the cliche answer here, but kind of like wrapped in that concept um, is knowing a little bit about what you want next and understanding that the next opportunity that comes across your desk um, or your inbox, it may not be something that fits every single one of those things that you want, but if it's moving you further in that direction, you know, be open to it, right? Like more often than not, each decision we make is just a stepping stone to something else. So I would say, you know, don't be afraid specifically in the sense of you're probably going to make mistakes or wrong turns and that's okay. Every single opportunity you have is going to teach you something. Um, You're gonna learn something about yourself you know, you're, you're maybe going to realize what you don't want. <laughs> um, that's just as valuable, I think, as, as finding these, so to speak, like perfect opportunities. And this will continue to be a theme your entire career, right? Like, I don't think anybody really gets into a role and it's like, okay, that's it. Like, that's, this is exactly where I want to be. Nothing has to be forever. You know, you can take a role and then decide, this isn't working. I think just treating it more of like with a growth mindset as opposed to this is fixed. This is exactly where I'm going to end up. The idea of what you learned in the advertising industry and the experiences you had there, what were you able to apply to now your newer role in operations and strategy? Like what was, what were kind of, you know, did you experience there and like, oh, this works really well here or were able to kind of build off of yeah so one of the um one of the biggest shifts coming into google was it's a huge company and there's so much um process and there's so much infrastructure that's been built right and in advertising it often kind of felt like we were you know building the plane as we were flying it right like it's very scrappy in a sense like you're just trying to figure out what's going to work and sure there's you know you're doing research and you're coming up with ideas but it is a very it's a very creative environment um and i think that being able to apply that to a strategy and operations role is really important and that's kind of the main the main thing that I tried to bring with me is like, how are we thinking creatively? How are we not getting too stuck in the way things have been? So I think um, taking a little bit of that spirit and that creativity is is really important in, in any role. And I think in advertising, it's like, we're almost just exposed to it so frequently because it's in everything that we work on that it, comes maybe a little bit more naturally when you've almost like grown up in that environment. And that's just how you've been trained to think, so to speak. Yeah, that's great. I, I guess it could be applied to both like the advertising industry from experience, but also like just the, the industry you're now, like what do you kind of see for the future? Things are changing so quickly. And I think that that's only going to continue to increase in the next five to 10 years. I don't really think that we've hit the plateau, so to speak. I mean, in influencer marketing, it's really just starting to to boom, right? And there's a lot of like major players in the space now. And you're seeing more and more dollars being put towards influencer marketing and just even other types of, um, of marketing. You know, now everybody's talking about the metaverse (laughs) Um, and it's like nobody really knows what it is yet, but it's going to continue to develop. And I think um, it'll start to make its way into our lives in in ways that we don't realize. Right. I don't think it's going to be like all of a sudden one day, okay, the metaverse, but we're going to start we're going to start seeing more in the way of the metaverse and just digital currency. So I really think there's a lot of changes coming in the next five to 10 years, like a huge, a huge shift in a lot of areas and I'm excited to see it. So, you know, 
to me, again, like tech is tech is a very exciting place to be because we were thinking about these challenges and trying to consider where, where to go next. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, when you're talking about some like disrupting things that happened in advertising and just in the tech industries in general, like right, social media, right, is a big one. And like you have influencer marketing is like a big thing now. I think there's a sense of like, sometimes we think like, oh, everything's going to be on Facebook now. And that's not necessarily true because there's been like 50 other platforms to come up that people like, right, that like have their own interesting things. So do you kind of see like the influencer side, do you see that stuff as like kind of being a similar vein where, you know, it's just become part of the the arsenal, you should say, of ways that we market or communicate or do things and not just like going to be a complete takeover? Or do you see it more as like a takeover, you know, of like, this is how everything's going to go? Like, what's your perspective on it? I think that there's going to be a place for a lot of the other I don't know what we'll call them like media. Um, I, you know, I think like it's all about where people are going. It's all about like, how can you find your audience in the place that they're at versus trying to drive them somewhere else. Right. So, you know, everybody is kind of, there's, there's been a lot of conversation about TV, right. But um, TVs haven't gone away completely look at connected TV, look at like all the growth in that area, right? Like, I think we just need to start thinking about um, things, things a little bit differently, right? If it's not traditional TV advertising, people are still watching TV. Um, how are they watching it? They're streaming now, right? Like my perspective is kind of, I don't think any one thing is gonna take over. I think we need to be prepared for the entire industry to change. Um, in every single aspect, so. Kind of on an end note, like what, thinking about, you know, you started advertising, you're in strategy development for a tech company now, like what, just in general, for anyone at any point, in it, whether they're new in, in, in the industry or, you know, been in an industry for a while, looking to make a change or advance, like, and again, I know you might have some similar answers on the answer, but just kind of end note, like what, what's a, what do you want them to know or what would you suggest to them to like, I don't know, progress forward or prepare themselves for the changing times that we're in, you know, what, what is your advice? Above anything else, making sure that every conversation you come out of, um, every person you work with, I think if you can prioritize that, you'll be successful in, in any industry, any role, right? Like if you can be a person that people enjoy working with and want to work with, um, that goes such a long way. So I think it's sometimes more about the how as opposed to the what. Like it's not always about exactly what you're doing or the exact accomplishments, but more often than not, it's about how you did it, how you got there, how did you treat others? What do people really, when they think of you, like how do they feel about you? That's the kind of stuff that I think is important and really can can help people to get ahead. So I think that's that's probably my one takeaway. It's like if you can focus on anything, just focusing on how to develop really strong, respectful relationships, that would be number one for me. That's great. And actually, you reminded me of something that you said earlier that I think is important now, too. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, especially with the pandemic, it was hard to kind of figure out, you know, how to apply for jobs or how to how to get into an industry, even if you're coming from a different one and have lots of experience, because there's not really ever a right answer. And, you know, it just depends on the person. So like, and you shared some really great insights about your kind of struggle and how you solved to get into Google and stuff like that. So what is your just general advice for that kind of like that's that scary feeling of like trying to get into an industry, whether you're new to work in general or you know, switching it up? Like what's your advice for getting in the door to someplace? Don't be afraid to take a risk. Do everything you can to be strategic about it and don't give up, even if the answer is no. Just keep trying because sometimes it takes a lot of failed attempts to finally get to the win. So 
Lauren, appreciate your conversation. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. We will see you next month on the next episode of Advancing With. Have a good one. 